Thank you, Park. Our choir has the morning off because um, later today they will be singing the Christmas concert with Church of the Trinity, um, another special group. There's a trio. There are costume changes. There is a lot of humor and really amazing music. I was so proud, and I just want you to know, Church of the Trinity was packed out on Wednesday night, and uh, we got this wonderful article in the gondolier. We're very happy uh, that uh, they're advertising. And so we want to fill the space today at 4 o'clock. We invite you back, bring your friends and neighbors for a really beautiful, uh, spirit-filled, and entertaining Christmas concert from both of our churches and um, we're so glad, uh, and we, we, all of us enjoyed that experience so thoroughly. And so we hope you'll come and support the choir and our musicians here at Trinity. Also, we want to remind you, you know, Christmas Eve, we're doing a little early this year at 4.30, but it's still going to be a candlelight service. We wanted to do that because we do have people who struggle about driving at night, and so we want to offer that experience so that we can get home while it's still dusk and light enough to drive. And we'll have a special guest harpist, our choir, other musicians. It'll be a beautiful, wonderful service for Christmas Eve. And then Christmas morning, if you can't make it on Christmas Eve, we, we hope that you'll come by on Christmas morning and celebrate the birth of Christ as we share communion together. Last but not least, um, uh, there's our Christmas stocking gifts this year, and uh, I brought my envelope today. I hadn't gotten around to doing it yet. We hope that you will help us uh, end the year wonderfully. It's a time to catch up on your giving or to give a little extra for year end and help us look forward to a new year ahead. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Isaac Watts was born in the late 17th century. <clears throat> he wrote the lyrics to Joy to the World 300 years ago today in 1719. It is a timeless, beloved Christmas hymn. It's a song most of us learned as children with its wonderful refrains, Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, heaven and nature sing. Isaac Watts was the eldest child born in England to a man who was imprisoned for his religious beliefs. His father was a nonconformist, it was called. It was an illegal movement of people who questioned the Church of England, who believed in a more inclusive vision of grace and love of God and Jesus Christ. Imagine that, 300 years ago that God's radical love was available to all, not just for the elect. And an American musician married Watts' lyrics to Handel's bouncing, singable music. We have the marriage of Handel and of Isaac Watts' lyrics. Isaac Watts, someone who suffered in his own time, from whom people turned away, who was discriminated against because of his appearance, 
nevertheless wrote hymns of love and joy that still thrill us when we hear them. He who was labeled ugly gave the gift of beautiful music for the ages. Today we hear the prophet Isaiah in this famous passage, often called the vision of the peaceable kingdom. God preparing for a time when justice, love, and peace will reign, when heaven and nature will sing the glory of God. Isaiah wrote in a time of upheaval and conflict and despair, but he had a vision for a future time when predators would be turned into companions, when those thought to be natural enemies would turn to each other with love, the wolf would lie down with the lamb, when human beings and all of creation would reflect the glory of the Creator. We were meant to live in love and harmony. We were not created to hate, to exploit, or to be at war. Isaiah says that God looks forward to the time when they, meaning all of us, will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. I don't know about you, but today I'm longing for that day. It's hard to read the news or see it on TV and to hear that prophet crying out for a time when we will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. <coughs> to get there, we must teach and live and speak like love is everything. The first letter of John says, God is love. And if you say you love God, but you hate your brother or sister, you are a liar. That is what the first letter of John says. If you say you love God, but you hate your brother or sister, you are a liar. That passage happened to be the passage for a Sunday 35 years ago when I preached at MCC Dallas, Texas. And so I had been preparing that passage. And I was there because there was a meeting of the National Council of Churches and of the board of the World Council of Churches. And we had been invited to attend those meetings. And then we in turn invited members of the National Council of Churches and World Council of Churches to visit us at our local and wonderful MCC Dallas. But meanwhile, the local Ku Klux Klan had called every MCC church in the area and said that they were going to protest at our churches that Sunday. Now, there are laws in Texas that say the KKK cannot be closer than one block away. They would have to be across the street in their robes protesting. And um, because the robes of the KKK, especially in the South, but everywhere, are such a symbol of terror, racism, and hatred. <coughs> so the KKK informed MCC Dallas that they wouldn't wear their robes, they'd just carry them over their arms and bring them to church on Sunday and attend church. A few years before, uh, the KKK had burned a cross on the lawn of our church in Houston, Texas. So that Sunday, MCC Dallas was prepared. There were uniform police, there were plainclothes police. The ushers were prepared, everyone was alerted. They saved the pew in the back for people from the KKK who would be coming in. White descendants of people who had lynched African Americans were members and present in that church, and they were full of fire <laughs> to confront the KKK. African Americans, some decided to stay away altogether, or some came in their own kind of defiance. And there was a little tension that morning, if you might not imagine it, sure enough. And I remember as we walked in to try to get ready for the processional to MCC Dallas, which was packed out, there was not a seat anywhere, there were hundreds and hundreds of people. The four or five people from the KKK showed up and they were the saddest looking group of little people I've ever seen in my life. And I remember being just astonished that people who carried all this fear and hatred and who inspired all this preparation from us were in some sense kind of puny looking. And I remember being right there when a, a bright young usher from MCC Dallas said, uh, handed each one a bulletin and said, 
Welcome to MCC Dallas. <laughs> now, don't forget, there were officials visiting from the World Council of Churches and from the National Council of Churches. And Reverend Elder Don Eastman, who was the pastor of the church at the time, got up to do his welcome, Vicki. And as he got up to welcome, he said, in his most hospitable way, well, welcome to MCC Dallas. We have some very special guests here this morning. And he kind of paused, and all the air got sucked out of the room at once, as people went, <gasps> kind of like that, because, of course, then he said, we want to welcome the World Council of Churches and the National Council of Churches to our worship, but, of course, we had only on our mind the Q Klux Klan. So sad. If you say you love God, but hate your brother and sister, you are a liar. So sad for people to be burdened with hatred and fear, people who say they love God, but it's a God we wouldn't recognize. It made me so grateful to be a part of a community full of love and grace. Now, I don't even remember what I preached, but sometime later in the service, the KKK snuck out. In that room, we had enough love for each other, for them, and also great joy. Jesus said, Sometimes the laws and rules of our faith seem complicated, but let me uncomplicate it for you, Jesus said. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. If you do this, you can't go wrong. We have an epidemic of hate in our country, and bad theology often fuels it. But I've always said, if it's not love, it's not God. And it is as simple as that. And what is love? First of all, I think love is caring enough to pay attention. We've all seen it, haven't we, this time of year, or participated? Children who perform at holiday plays or chorus events, there are funny videos and all kinds of things. They're performing in front of family who are paying attention and beaming. I remember when my goddaughter, who was just five years old, lost her mom to a heroin overdose. At Christmas time, she was adjusting to her new home, her foster mom, who would eventually adopt her, and me as her godmother. Her mother and I had gotten to the school performance just before it started, but we were kind of at the back. And when her time came to sing, we watched her scanning the crowd, looking and hoping that someone was there to see her, and she kept looking, and we could see that she couldn't see us. And she even stopped singing, which she loved to do. She was looking for that loving gaze coming back at her. And her face fell as we could see that she could not see us. Never in my life did I want to jump up out of my seat and start waving my hands so she would see us, and to this day, I wish I had. Afterwards, she was glad to see us, but she was still inconsolable, as she thought no one was there to pay attention to her. Haven't we ever felt that way? God, have you forgotten us? Do you still love us? Are we precious in your sight? Love is paying attention to one another, to what's happening to the most vulnerable in our community in the world. I think of this past week, I was at the funeral of my sister-in-law's mother, Leslie's mom, and her grandkids testified about how she loved them by paying attention, by playing with them, by being curious about who each of them were as individuals. They felt known and seen and understood by their grandma. And that is what made them feel loved. And love is messy sometimes. Sometimes people are not easy to love. Sometimes we are not <laughs> easy to love. Love is a great theory. It's the practice that sometimes kind of kills us, right? There's that Peanuts cartoon, I love humankind, it's people I can't stand, right? Love is hard. Sometimes tough love is needed. 
Loving through the hard times is our greatest challenge. And love is, well, it's just downright inconvenient at times. Love wrecks our schedules, changes our plans, disrupts our lives. And Jesus told us to love even our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us. Not so easy. And finally, love is the ground underneath joy. That's how I think of love. It's the ground underneath joy. Isaac Watts wrote that we are to rejoice in the wonders of God's love. The wonders of God's love. After a terrible time of illness and breakdown, Isaac Watts was invited to live with a couple <clears throat> who showed him hospitality the rest of his life. In a world that was cruel to him personally, he found rest and community and love. Love heals. It's the way to peace. Love makes the impossible possible. And when we are loved, we can face anything. We can overcome anything everything. We can learn to trust again. Love can inspire us to do what we might not otherwise do. It's the whole thing. It's the only reason we exist. The reason Suncoast was born and has persevered. There's no other reason for us to be a church. If we're not about love, we should just pack up and go home. Could Isaac Watts have ever imagined that his hymns would be sung in dozens of languages, that a church like MCC would even exist? once again to advocate for the radically inclusive love of God? I want to believe that Suncoast, that MCC churches, could have been a place where Isaac Watts, in all his genius and frailty, could have been at home, could have been valued. What we do, what we give, what we sacrifice for love, that's what lasts. That's what makes a difference. That is the ground of joy in this season and always and what unifies us with the Creator and all of creation. Amen.